Good morning, Harmony. There's something wrong with my, uh, with my bulletin. It says it's September the 1st. Can't possibly be September, is it? There's something wrong here. Okay, there, there are a few things in your bulletin that I do want you to be aware of. Um, today at 11.15, that's after the service or, or thereabouts, the evangelism team is meeting. Uh, Wednesday night, the trustees are meeting at 545, and Thursday morning at 10 a.m., the nominations committee is meeting for a uh, hopefully a final time as we round up all of the people that we need uh, to help serve us. A few other announcements that I want you to be aware of, they're in your uh, bulletin, but we want to call attention to them. Um, we need help transporting boxes of church records, and that is uh, September the 14th from 9 to 12. They need at least two vehicles and uh, people to carry the boxes to the vehicles. Um, this is for the fall document shredding time. So <clears throat> um, please make sure if you, if you can uh, spare some time on Saturday the 14th from 9 to 12, please let us know uh, that you would like to do that. Trunk or Treat, we're having a meeting next week, next Sunday, uh, September 8th at 11.15. That'll be in the upper room area. Uh, choir practice, all of these, uh, these people with wonderful voices will be coming back and, um, and gracing us on Sunday mornings. That's going to be Monday evenings at 6 p.m., and the first choir meeting is September the 9th. Uh, there is a cleanup day on September 21st at 9 a.m. Uh, please, if you can spare a few moments of your time on that Saturday, please come out and uh, help clean up the church and clean up the outside yard um, and do some of the, the things that we need to have done on the outdoor cleanup day. Uh, there is a building fund. We've had, uh, we had problems with the uh, septic system. We had to take a tree down. We had roots in there. They had to put new pipes in. And so if you can uh, spare a little bit of money, there is a, a, a thing in your bulletin about that. Um, make sure that you uh, don't make that part of, of your regular giving, make that above and beyond your regular giving. But you, if you need to write out uh, an additional check, that is to the uh, HUMC uh, Building Fund and make sure that you uh, get that in today. We just need a little bit of help uh, meeting our bills and meeting uh, some of the things that we needed to do uh, to fix that situation, which is fixed now. Don't forget there's a yard sale, an indoor yard sale, food sale coming up September 14th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you've got the dates there, Monday, September 9, Wednesday, September 11, and that's from 1 to 7. You can drop off some of your donations there. Uh, we also need to cancel the Wednesday night uh, prayer and Bible study. Uh, we do not have a leader. We've not located a leader yet uh, for Wednesday nights, so that is uh, canceled for the time being. Uh, and Neighbors in Harmony, uh, this month, <laughs> September again, it says September in my bulletin, it can't possibly be September. Anyway, canned vegetables like carrots, green beans, corn, etc., uh, that's what we're looking for for the month of September. Uh, we're getting ready for a VIM trip, for a volunteers and mission trip, and I thought we'd have uh, Ginger uh, Grimes talk to us a little bit about that this morning and let us know what's coming up on the, um, on the VIM trip. So, Ginger? Good morning. Well, we're very excited because we'll be leaving in about a month for our trip to Kentucky. So this year, our team will be going to Hindman, Kentucky. It's in eastern Kentucky. It's a small rural town of about 650 people. Uh, they were hit with uh, floods in 2022 and uh, a second flood closely after. So they have a lot of repairs and new builds to be done. There were 17 people uh, that, were, that lost their life in the floods. And as many times we hear, uh, the actual flooding came at night. So many people were lost or disoriented and, and it, was a, it was a tough time to try to, to recuperate, recuperate that in a small community especially. So we are happy to be going to Hinman. We voted on two or three different places and I feel that this is the place we are called to go. And so I'm happy to do that. We have seven people from our congregation that will be going. So we have a nice group rep representing 
uh, Harmony. And of course, now we have about eight churches that are involved with our Hope Builders which is the group that we are in charge of and or we are a member of. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have at least 20, maybe to 25 people uh, each week, but we still have openings for anyone who would like to join us for a week or a, a few days. Uh, just let me know, we're having our last meeting in a couple weeks, so we could use all the help we can. Um, I looked up Henman this morning just to get a little bit of an idea about the community and it said, what is Henman famous for? So I, I read a little article and it's uh, in 1902, it was the first rural, rural social settlement school in America. So I wasn't familiar with this term, but being a rural community in the 19, early 1900s, there were a lot of needs that were in the community, so they developed a, a school where they educated, where they fed them, where they took care of their medical needs, and also uh, their social needs. Uh, that area was big for music. A lot of you all are familiar with the dulcimer playing and the, the music that many of these rural, rural communities have. Also art, they tried to let the children develop some kind of uh, uh, art and see what kind of expressions they had. So, however, the, the, the school is still um, in, in, um, in full-fledged, it's changed over the years. So they've adapted to the community uh, each year and like right now they're working with uh, uh, kids that have dyslexia and they work with their parents as far as family, social services, that type of thing, and they're doing art projects and they're doing music and whatever they can still do in the community. They were flooded. And uh, so uh, I look forward to uh, maybe touring that area and seeing how they're doing because they are have been rebuilding the last two years. So that's gonna be an interesting part of the community that we are going to uh, work with. We are working this year through the Appalachian Service Project, which I'm sure many of you all are familiar with. I know the uh, women in faith have worked with them before, but uh, so we're going through them and we have to register with them and are vetted through them. So if anybody is interested, uh, please let me know soon because you will have to go online and, and get yourself registered so that we can work through the project because they're our, kind of our umbrella this year. I um, want to thank everybody for their support of our VIM team. Uh, through the years, many of you all have, uh, have donated money uh, to us. You've bought many centerpieces at Christmas that we've made, and you've um, offered prayers, trail mix, cookies, all those things, and we appreciate it, and we feel like you are a part of our team because you are our support and we appreciate everyone. Many of our members have been not able to go the last few years because they have other obligations, but they're still members of our team. Many of them showed up for the local projects that we do in uh, Martinsburg and in Falling Waters, and so that's been really good to get together and do something together here locally, so we do that. So we want to thank you very much, and if anyone would like to um, know what we do with our money, uh, we collect uh, the money that has been donated, plus the church offers some extra money, and then we put that in a group uh, account, and then when we get there, we use it for anything that we need for building. Appalachian Service Projects will provide a lot of the... Um, lumber and things that we need, but we, we don't always get what we need and we want to be able to get done what we, so we often will we'll go to Lowe's every day, maybe two or three times, and we'll get whatever we need. We'll use that money for the local community. We see what needs to be done. Sometimes it's maybe, a, a, there, we're supposed to work on new builds this year because some of the people have been flooded out. They're moving to higher land and they're giving them a good deal on 
building a new home for them so that they will not be afraid of being flooded out again. And so uh, if they need a washer dryer, or if they need a refrigerator, or if we're not happy with the quality, like for instance, a lot of times they'll say, well, we can do this, but we can't do this for them because we don't have enough money. A lot of times we'll do that extra thing. And so that when we leave, the homeowner can have their home. So thank you all very much. Appreciate your support. Good morning, everyone. It might rain today, but let's have happiness in our heart as we prepare to worship this morning. I'm here to welcome everybody to our church, and I just have a few little announcements for you. Um, each Sunday, we have coffee and snacks in Henry Hall immediately after church. So when you leave the sanctuary, turn left and go up the ramp and join us. And if you'd like to have an upper room monthly devotional, they're out in the North Rex. Today also, I'm going to tell you about the birthdays for this week. Uh, the first is Steve Davis. Happy birthday, Steve Davis. He is here with us this morning. On the third is Cora Eagle. On the fourth is Lois Puff. And the fifth is Adrian, Adrian Henry. Let us prepare our hearts for worship and celebrate God our Creator with the musical prelude. Would you please rise and join me in the call to worship? Trust in the Lord and do good. May the Lord give strength to the people. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is our refuge and our strength. Now join me in our hymn of praise for the beauty of the earth.
may please be seated. Let's turn our thoughts and attention to our opening prayer. O God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit, that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear this good news, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The epistle reading today is from James chapter 1, verses 17 through 21. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth to us by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with me, with meekness, the implanted word that has the power to save our souls. May you be blessed in hearing this holy word. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark. This is chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, and then 14 and 15. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law, who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with unclean, that is, ceremonially, ceremonially unwashed hands. The Pharisees and all Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial wash. They do not eat unless they wash, in the tradition, holding to the tradition of the elders. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the traditions of the elders, instead of eating their food with unclean hands? Jesus replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. It is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. Again, Jesus called the, to the, the crowd to him, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you stand please and join in our hymn of preparation? It's Just As I Am Without One Plea. It's number 357 in your hymnals if you need to look it up. Please be seated. Since we'll be dealing with the gospel according to Mark for the next uh, couple of months, it seems only appropriate to say a few words about Mark's little book. It's considered the very first gospel written of the four that we have in our Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and it's written sometime around maybe 65 A.D., traditionally ascribed to a traveling companion of Peter. But this Mark, this John Mark, was also um, a traveling companion of Paul, of Barnabas, of Silas, of Timothy, and all of the other earlier apostles. They'd become apostles, you see, because disciples are those who follow and who are learning. Apostles are those who are preaching. They're evangelists. They are preaching the word of God. So they've become apostles instead of disciples. Mark, or John Mark, is thought to have collected a number of stories and sayings of Jesus to convince others that he was indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the expected one. Mark uses the term gospel not as we now refer to it. Nowadays we refer to it as the the good news of God's love. But when Mark uses it, he means it's the message of the apostles, 
A gospel is, is the message that apostles are proclaiming. He is, of course, working backwards in his story. He already knows who Jesus is. He already knows of the impending crucifixion. He already knows of the resurrection. He already knows that Jesus is the Christ. So he has to work backwards to convince people coming towards this story. He needs to convince others, so he tells the stories of Jesus. Now, in today's story, those fact-finding, maybe I should call them the fault-finding Pharisees, comment on how Jesus' disciples do not follow the traditions of the Hebrew people. They do not ritually, ceremonially, wash before they eat. Now, the Pharisees were not talking about just washing your hands before you eat, before you put something in your mouth. They're, not, they're talking about a ritual washing, one that is steeped in tradition. They make sure that nothing unclean entered the body. Pharisees are actually citing a tradition that began with the people, when the people of Judah were dragged off into Babylon, in the Babylonian exile, hundreds of years before this. In the days of Daniel and his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These ritual washings certified that nothing unclean, nothing forbidden, would enter into a Jewish body. The Hebrews were required to wash their hands, their forearms, their plates, their bowls, their kettles, everything that, that had to touch the food that they were going to eat, all to preserve the cleanliness or separation from the heathen Babylonians. In response to the Pharisees' question, Jesus points out that these self-same Pharisees skirt God's laws and traditions when it suits their purpose. Not when it suits others' purposes, but when it suits their purpose. Like honoring your mother and your father. That's one example that he holds up to them. They use a loophole to avoid doing that. They use a loophole to say, well, I really set aside those, those funds as an offering to God, not to take care of my mother and my father. Therefore, I don't have to honor that particular commandment. They used traditions when it suited them, not when it suited others. The disciples were not living according to ancient, irrelevant traditions. They were living according to what God was calling them to do now what God was calling them to do in the future, to follow the one who, sent, who was sent to them now and to spread the good news of God's love for all people now. Disciples, those who followed Christ, are called, were not called to live in the past and observe ancient proceedings. They're called to live into the future and to observe God's love for all people, God's gracious love in the here and the now. That letter of James speaks to those Christians who were searching for understanding and insight for living God's word day by day by day. James spoke of rebirth and he spoke of first fruits. Rebirth means it's a reference to regeneration of the soul. It's a regeneration, a rebirth from within so that we're able to be the first new Christians, the first fruits of what God is bringing forth in this world. So that these first fruits, these first Christians could go on and spread the good news of God's love for all people. The, lo the letter speaks to the glory that people of the, of the first century. It speaks to their needs and how to find ways to follow these new ideas of Christ. To love God with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind. To love others as you love yourself. Jesus reminded all the people that, that those who follow Christ, that it was the stuff that comes out of people. It's the things that they say with their mouths. It's the lies, the deceits, the bullying, the bragging. That's what makes a person unclean. When you stop and, and think about what you're saying before you say it, it, that's what makes you unclean is what comes out of the person, not what goes into a person. Not that traditions are bad. Don't get me wrong on that. But, being held, but sometimes traditions can hold us back from following the God that we follow, from following a strict, unchangeable tradition. 
And when we do that, we can stand in the way of God. God's name is Yahweh, and Yahweh translates to I am. It also means I am what I will be. I will be what I will be. I will use whomever I choose to use at whatever time I choose to do it because I'm God and I created all things. Both Jesus in his gospel story and James through his letter call on people, call on the, those who follow Christ to live a life of virtue, to live a life of virtue. That every gift, every breath, everything we eat, everything we drink, everything is meant to keep our bodies going. Everything that we have in this world is a gift from a God who loves us, a God who created us. And that goes for all of God's creation. Today we celebrate communion, that which goes into our bodies. It's an, it's an act that is meant to pull us all together and remind us that we all worship the Lord God Almighty, the same Lord. We're not stuck to a certain way, to a certain method, or a certain manner. I've got to admit this, I have celebrated communion with youth groups using pizza and soda because it's just a reminder that what goes into our bodies, we're thinking about it. We're thinking about who provided us with this food, that it's provided by a loving God, and we feast upon that. It keeps our bodies alive. It's the breath and the food that goes into us. Through this act, we become one community. We become one people ready to go out and serve others, to help others, to build for others. We become one group of worshipers whose duty it is to spread the good news of God's love for all people. But now let us turn our thoughts and attention to the list of prayers that we have in our bulletin for those prayers of the people that are facing surgeries, for those prayers of the people who are sick and infirmed, and we just need to be thinking about these people. It says our country, I would say, I would add our world. Our world is just a messed up, very messed up place right now, so I would add our country and our world, and Kelly, and Jim and Delaney, Margaret and Emma Lou, Steve and family, Janet and family, Don, Stephen, Winter and TJ, and Sawyer. Those are on our ongoing list, the, the list that keeps changing. Our ongoing concerns are for Lori and for Holly, for George and for Joan, for Doug and Lois and Gary, for Jean, for Lee and Roger, for Bill, for Melissa, for TJ, and for Dennis. Are there others at this time that we would like to add to those lists, to those petitions? Yes. And you might be surprised at, at how important these prayer shawls are, especially to people who are in the hospital, people who are dealing with illnesses, um, just to be presented, just to be remembered, just th that they know that here is a shawl that has been prayed over, has been lovingly supplied by a particular group of, of church people. It means so much. I have seen these miracles take place in hospitals myself. I saw another hand up here. Oh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes. So that was Ralph again? Okay. 
Do we have others that we'd like to add? Oh, yes. What's the last name of the family? Stevens. Stevens. Uh, are, are there others? Yes. Pardon me? For Anna, yes. Absolutely. And others. Oh, David in the back. Who was that again? Eddie okay. Eddie Caldwell. And let us take these. Oh, one more. <laughs> Go ahead. You got you to gotta stand up and wave your hand sometimes. Yeah, right, there you go. <laughs> And we're glad that Florida gets uh, a little dose of us every once in a while, too. So, I think my mom's down there watching, too, right now. Let us, let us go ahead and take these prayers and these petitions to the Lord this day. Gracious God, we give you thanks for each and every day. We give you thanks for the people who draw us ever closer to you. We give thanks for those who tell us the good news, who tell us the truth. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are infirm, for those who are waiting for surgeries, who are in hospitals. We pray for those who need prayer shawls to be given to them. We pray for our VIM team as they go off to make sure that there's adequate housing for those who've been flooded out year after year after year. Lord, we lift everyone up in prayer this day, and we give you thanks. We always give you thanks for your gracious, never-changing, undying love for each and every one of us. All of this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let's take a moment and share the peace of Christ with one another. You may stand up and wave to each other, or walk across the aisles and shake hands. Thank you very much, Lucille. <laughs> See, now while you're standing, you can easily get to your wallets and easily get to your pockets and whatnot. So we'll share, we'll share our gifts, and, uh, and we'll have our ushers pass the plate as we listen to our morning offering, our offertory.
Let's join together with our offertory prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. We give you praise and thanks for all your mercies. Your goodness has created us. Your bounty has sustained us. Your discipline has chastened us. Your patience has borne with us. Your love has redeemed us. Give us a heart to love and serve you and enable us to show our thankfulness for all your goodness and mercy by giving up ourselves to your service and cheerfully submitting in all things to your blessed will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. You may be seated. Let us turn our thoughts and attention to the service of word and table. I'm on page number 13 in the hymnals. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good thing and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth, And all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. With the confidence of children of God, let us pray that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Did you break the bread already? Because we are one loaf, one body, we have one loaf of, of bread. And because we share the blood of Christ. This is the blood of Christ that is given for each and every one of us. The table is set. I'll ask the uh, stewards to come forth and help us distribute the communion this morning and the ushers to direct the different aisles as they come up.
Let us end with our communion prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is number 399 in your hymnals. It is Take My Life and Let It Be. Let us stand and sing this final hymn. As you go forth on this Labor Day weekend, I wish you a safe and sane Labor Day. Please treat others kindly. Please treat each other and yourselves kindly as well. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father God Almighty, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.